Okay, this is OpenStax chapter 10, number four. Uh, it's a three-part problem. It starts out, there is a 75 kilogram grindstone. They gave us the radius and they tell us if you apply a force of 180 newtons with that information, we could find three different things. One, what's the net torque applied? And two, the angular acceleration. Well, in part C, they add a small frictional force and we have to find the angular acceleration again. All right, so I would start like this for part A to find the net torque. I've got two formulas that I could find torque with. One of them says, take the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration of the wheel. Well, I went ahead and found the moment of inertia for you. Since we could assume the grindstone is a solid disc, it's gonna be one half mR squared. So I went ahead and found the moment of inertia for you but we can't find the net torque because we don't know the angular acceleration yet. We have to use the other formula to find torque, and that's how much force is applied perpendicular to the lever arm. Um, some books write it, they say force, and they put a big X because mathematically that stands for the cross product. I do it this way. I make a little sign to let me know it's perpendicular because technically that means multiply by the perpendicular component, but it looks like it just means multiply. So you might see it two different ways. Mathematically, it's called the cross product. So to find the torque for part A, I'm going to say find the amount of force that's applied perpendicular to the lever arm. And they told us that force was 180 newtons. And here the lever arm is how far the force is applied away from the center, which is the radius. So I have to take 180 newtons times a radius of 0.28, and that gives me a net torque of 50.4, and the unit for torque is newton meters. All right, so we're done with part A. We got that first part done. We found the net torque. Now everything's gonna fall into place. To get the angular acceleration, I'm just gonna use the other formula. Since torque is two different things, I could say, well, for part B, if I need to find the angular acceleration, I know torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. So therefore, the angular acceleration is torque divided by the moment of inertia. Well, I just found the torque. I'm gonna to divide by the moment of inertia of the wheel, which was 2.94, and that gives me an angular acceleration of 17.1 radians per second squared. All right, so we got the second part of the problem. Now in the third part of the problem, they have us calculate a small frictional torque. If there was a little bit of friction on that wheel applied uh, 1.5 centimeters from the center, it would actually give it a slightly smaller angular acceleration. So to do that one, I'm gonna use another formula. My net torque is simply the sum of all the individual torques. So I know the torque that's applied to speed it up, but I also need to find the torque that's applied that's slowing it down. There's a frictional torque. So I'm gonna take the torque that's applied minus the frictional torque. All right, so I find that frictional torque the same way. It's just gonna be how much force is applied, and they told us that frictional torque was 20 newtons. And I have to multiply that by the lever arm, which is 0 0.015 meters. I had to convert the centimeters to meters there. So I get this frictional torque, and it's a really small amount. It's only 0.3 newton meters. So I'm going to plug that in for my frictional torque. I know that the net torque was the 50.4 that I started out with. That's the applied torque trying to speed it up, minus the 0.3 newton meters that's slowing it down. It gives me a net torque of 50.1, and I'm not done yet, I need to find the angular acceleration. So I just go back in that same formula that we used in part B to find angular acceleration, I take the torque and divide by moment of inertia. The only thing that's different is this time I take the net torque, which is a little bit less, and divide by the same moment of inertia. And that's gonna give me an angular acceleration of 17.0 radians per second squared. All right, that's how you find moment of inertia and net torque. See you in the next problem.